Welcome to the Phone Arena video review of the Motorola Click. Despite the hype around the droid, the Click is actually the company's first Android device. Motorola is in a world of hurt. However, they are planning on an Android to pull them out, and this is a pretty decent start. The Click is by no means perfect. It's marketed and spec like a mid-level phone, even though the price tag is $200 on contract, matching that of the droid. For your money, there are definitely better options, but we like a lot about the Click. There are a few things we don't like, however, and it starts with the build quality. The phone is made out of all plastic and feels that way. Still, it's extremely heavy for the size. The slide is also loose as well. There's not really play in this direction, or at least not anything that we wouldn't expect. However, you can move it up and down and especially when just held in one hand, it moves around on its own. Opening the click to reveal the full QWERTY keyboard makes it feel a lot more solid. The hinge is spring assisted, so it takes a little bit of a push to get it started, but then it jumps on its own. In this orientation, there's absolutely no play in the screen, and it feels much more solid. However, opening that reveals the QWERTY keyboard, which we're not crazy about. It started off pretty well when we began to type. However, this bottom row here is actually concave, meaning that your finger just kind of sinks into it. And it also doesn't have the clickiness that the top rows of keys do. This top rows of keys are actually mounted, so they feel pretty good. And if it weren't for having to hit the space bar so frequently, we wouldn't mind it. An odd design choice is the directional pad on the left-hand side. As most of the world is right-handed, it is a little bit counterintuitive. However, one thing we do like about having it, not necessarily on that side, is that it shrinks the keyboard down a little bit. With phones these days getting bigger and bigger, as screens get larger and larger, the keypads get longer and longer. There are times when it just feels too awkward and too far apart to type, and this D-pad helps squish it down a little bit. If you can get used to the concave keys, the keypad is actually pretty good for what it is. There's no offset, but it's still not bad. Speaking of displays, the Click uses a 3.1 inch capacitive one. It features 262,000 colors. Better than HTC devices that we've seen, but not quite as good as the Moment or the Droid, both of which have 16 million colors. Still, everything looks extremely clear and sharp on here and videos looked absolutely fantastic. There are a few physical buttons on the click. At the bottom here we have menu, home, and back. There is no search button. There also is no send and end key. Everything is handled on screen. On the left side of the phone we find a volume rocker as well as a vibrate switch. We really like having this switch. Palm's had it for years and we wish we'd see it on more devices. There's also the micro USB charging and data port. The right side has the lock and power key, as well as the camera key. The back is very simplistic. It features a patterned design. In this case, it is inverted dimples. On the top of that is the 5.0 megapixel camera. It looks tiny, but it is autofocus and actually took surprisingly good pictures. The back is a little hard to get off, but underneath you'll find the SIM card, the included 2 gigabyte memory card, and the battery. Going back to build quality for a second, you can see there's a slight gap in here. Not a big deal if you couldn't tell that there were things inside of it. It's just one of those things that Motorola could have done a little bit better, especially at the price that they're charging. What sets the click apart from other Android devices is the software. Motorola has their own spin on Android and calls it Moto Blur. Moto Blur is a customized Android interface that delivers information from news outlets and social networking sites. At its core, it's very similar to the stock Android. Things don't look extremely different. For instance, you have your application drawer here, and the home screens are pretty much the same. They do offer five pages of content, as opposed to the stock three. There are also custom widgets. In this case, we see our news and entertainment widgets. If we want to 
look closer at a headline that's streaming through our device, we simply tap on it. We're not leaving the home screen. We can then scroll through to get more through information related to the topic. As you can see, we also have this for our messages, which integrates not only with SMS, MMS, and email, but also with Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, and other social networking sites. We also have a happenings widget. This widget gives us Facebook updates, Twitter posts, and other, face, and other social network related issues. One of the things we like here is we can directly see comments on a Facebook post, for instance, and we can make our own comment. Again, we can scroll through here and we'll get information from all of our friends. If we go to our Moto Blur account, we can see we have many different options. We have MySpace, Facebook, Google, Twitter, Last.fm, Picasa, Photobucket, and Yahoo Mail. There's also an op option for corporate sync and personal email setup. Like we said, everything is integrated into the messaging application. This way, if we get a Facebook message, it's going to show up in our mailbox. If we get a Twitter message, it shows up there as well. We also have our standard text messaging and other accounts. Of course, Gmail is a standalone app on this, just like any other program. But we can also check other email accounts, either POP3 or IMAP. The browser is very stock. It runs the same browser that normal Android does. As you can see, this is an MSNBC article. This was brought up by a link on our homepage from news. There is no multi-touch in this. There, pinch and zoom is just is not an option. The browser is okay. It takes a little while to load, especially over edge speeds. However, when connected to Wi-Fi, it moved along quickly enough. One of the other great aspects about Moto Blur is the contact integration. Similar to WebOS, it brings all your contacts from different places and puts them on your device as one. It'll merge information, and when, inf when screen names are not recognized, you have the option to link it yourself. As you can see, there are a couple different tabs. We have status feeds, and we also have a history. All of this pulling from our social networking sites. We really like this integration. It's not quite as deep as HTC's, but at the, at the same time, it does offer us some stuff that we like better. For instance, the happenings is like the HTC tab for social network updates, as well as history. We do also like the actual contact integration and the fact that we can link different contacts, something we can't do with HTC devices. The fact that it supports more social networking sites other than Facebook is also a great advantage. Another very cool feature of the Click is photo editing. We're in the photo album right now, which looks different than the Android interface, but on the surface is still fairly basic. However, once we bring out the slider drawer here, we see a cool little 3D effect. We can switch between all pictures and my pictures. My pictures are the camera albums. Let's open up a picture here. And you can see that as we swipe through, there's a very cool effect going on. Let's take this picture and edit it. If we go to the edit option, it'll bring up all of our editing tools. The first thing we'll show off is the auto adjustment. It subtly changes the color tone, the saturation, the brightness, and other things to make the picture look a little bit more realistic. We're going to switch it, and as you can see, on the right side is the edited picture, and on the left is the original. We can then customize things from here. For instance, if we want to change the contrast. On the right side, you can see that it's changing, while on the left, it's unchanged. This way we can see a direct effect of what we're doing. There are many options like this. Brightness, color, 
RGB, white balance. We can add some options. For instance, we can put a speech bubble on here. We can also add clip art. So if you take a picture of a friend, you can give them funny glasses. It's relatively basic software, but at the same time, relatively powerful for a phone. While the fun frames and that kind of stuff are nice, it is also cool to be able to immediately adjust saturation, color balance, and the like. For the most part, we came away impressed with the Motorola Click, but there are a few things that really bugged us. First and foremost are the build quality and keyboard construction. For some users, this will be a complete turnoff. For those that can get past it, there's a lot to like about the Click. The Moto Blur interface isn't perfect, definitely has some polishing to do, but we like a lot of things about it, such as the contact integration. We were a little disappointed to see that it wasn't used on the, the Motorola Droid as well. We feel that this is a great starting point for Motorola, and once they get the interface a bit more refined and get some better hardware out there, they'll have a real winner on their hands.